All right. Good morning. Good afternoon. I guess depending on where you're at in the world. <laughs> I am Curtis Webster, the, the founding father of Dad's Married to Doctors, and I am excited to chat with you all today, but but especially with our guest, uh, Cher Kretz. And Cher, I know, speaking of time zones, you're over in California, so, so it's still a good morning for you, right? <laughs> that's right. That's right. You guys are going into lunchtime, and I'm finishing up breakfast. Nice to be here. <laughs> Time zones are an amazing thing. Speaking about parenting and, and some of the conversation we'll have today, I was talking with um, one of my daughters just about the world being a globe and the different time zones and all that. And it's like, this is this is so complicated. I, it's understandable and everybody's at a different place in the world, but trying to explain it to a to an eight-year-old. <laughs> Yeah, and after you explain it, just say, okay, then Google it. <laughs> I'll, I'll explain you details, and after that, just Google it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It, the funniest thing, my uh, my five-year-old and my eight-year-old, and now even, of course, my 11-year-old, they'll stand in front of the Amazon device, the, the show, and they'll call her name and be like, all right, explain this to me, or do this math problem. I'm like, no, no, no. Yes. she's not your, 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 your AI calculator. <laughs> like, I'm just, I'm just working with the times here. What do you think? <laughs> resourceful you know, yeah, for, for, for us it was like can i use my calculator for them it's like can i ask my virtual assistant <laughs> right can i literally have my computer on here telling me the answers is that a problem it's like why do i need to know this you know alexa can answer everything or google or whoever that's so true oh, but share i'm excited to have you with us today so share runs the uh the solution solution focused podcast right well, it is a solution focused podcast, but it's called Parenting 2.0, yeah. the focused mindset. Yes. And I, and I focus on solution focused skills for families and parents and how to help kids be solution focused and all of those important things right now. See, and I knew that. So those of y'all that know me best, y'all know that's where my, my, my ADHD kicks in and I, I get all I'm my the words jumbled way. up a little bit. <laughs> I'm the same I knew way. it was all in there. It was all good topics. <laughs> But, um, but no, Sherry, excited to have you, excited to chat. Um, as you know, especially with us um, having over 4,000 dads around the world, you know, this whole idea of solution-focused parenting, this whole idea of having a positive mindset and becoming a better father, a better husband, and ultimately a better, a better man so that we can strengthen our family is the goal. And so I'm excited to chat with you and just about some of the things that you've learned in your journey as a, as a school counselor and as a, as a girl mom, a, girl, a mom of three girls, just like I'm a dad of three girls. Um, so I'd love to, before we jump into to everything, let's, let's actually start off with your background and how you went from you know, working with kids and raising your own kids to realizing that there needed to be a better um, solution and a better content out there into the world for struggling parents like myself. Yeah. Well, first of all, all parents are struggling. If they ever tell you they're not, that's their, you know, that's their Facebook post. That's not the real person, right? But the thing is, is that way back when I started my career, I was a Head Start teacher and I worked with the little guys. I don't know if anyone knows about Head Start, but it's state and federally funded preschool for mostly disadvantaged, well, all basically economically disadvantaged uh, population. And I loved it. But in that, you work a lot with parents. It's a very, it's a state funded program, but you have to incorporate the whole, uh, the whole family. Right. So I began even then to began to have a love for working with family units because I realized that I can sit with a child in a classroom, but uh, it's the conversation with the parents that they would walk away and then be able to implement that. So that was a long time ago. Uh, from there, I went ahead and became a school counselor. And in my school counseling, I worked with elementary, middle school, and high school. I was a head high school teacher and actually college as well as a college counselor as well. So I had all of this ex uh, experience at that point under my belt. Again, what do you do a lot of time? Work with parents. You help parents to help their child at all of these stages. And mm -hmm. every one of these stages are just so important. And it cemented in how much, you know, I'm one of those that I don't shy away from the parent phone calls. I'm like, oh, great. I get to call the parent. Now we can dig in because I've talked to this kid and I know how they think and I know how they tick. And then um, in the last couple of years, I started really feeling as though there was another calling, you know, that I needed to do more. I was teaching college at the time. Um, just like your population, you know, I'm that wife that I have a lot going on, you know, and, but <laughs> yeah. I felt as though 
I wanted to do, start a podcast. And I'm like, oh, wow, you know, I want to, I want to help parents in a different type of way. And I bought all the stuff and then I was chickening out. I was like writing out everything I was going to do. I'm doing my normal stuff. I do counseling. I do parent workshops all the time. And I'm like, oh, that's going to be great on the podcast, you know? And then the pandemic hit. And once it hit mm -hmm. and that I got that phone call, you know, the first thing that popped in my mind, I thought, you know, it was like, God told me, all right, you better start. You better do it right now. Right. So I started the podcast, right? And the podcast Parenting 2.0 really came into play because parents feel as though they've been upgraded. They didn't ask for an upgrade, but they used to be on regular Parent 101. And now this whole pandemic parenting is like Parenting 2.0. And we just have to figure it out. And none of us have been in that education course. So, <laughs> so it. I'm figuring it out with everyone, but as well, I've been able to develop strategies that have worked for parents. I've done many parent workshops, many podcast episodes on these subjects. Yeah. And, uh, and that's where I'm at today. I love that. I love the, like you said, your heart for the kids, number one. And then of course your heart for the parents. I remember talking with, um, actually a dog trainer <laughs> and, and and he was talking about more important for him than training the dog to sit and roll over and do what they were supposed to do was training the parents training the owners to properly reinforce yes. Yes. the 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 lessons and the mindset and everything that he had ingrained into the into the pet yes. and, and you know and so it's so interesting because like you said we we, we have kids and we're like, all right, great. Well, we're going to figure this out. We're going to, you know, just, just become pros at this, <laughs> but re quickly realize, no, 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 we need a training manual. We need some help and that there are better ways to do these things. Maybe the way that we were brought up and the ways that we were learned that we learned how to do things might not apply to this current generation and to our kids. Oh, most definitely. And also just to give us all grace, because, you know, what I did with my oldest, that's now an adult. Uh, is not the same way that I always parent my youngest. And sometimes I have to realize that when I know better, I do better. And mm -hmm. it's not to say that I was a horrible parent then, but the mistakes that I made then, I was doing my best in that moment. And as we learn and grow, we evolve into a better version of ourselves. Then we're able to put that, rather than beating ourselves up, we're saying, all right, we're going to put it in action. And we're going to be that person in our current moment, you know, wherever we're at. That's right. I love that. If we know better, we do better. I love that. Yep. That is totally our, our mantra. And that's, that's really was the, the, the mindset behind creating DMD six years ago. I figured there had to be some guys that understood, or at least were further along the path uh, than I was that could provide some insight. So I appreciate you bringing and sharing your insight with us today. So what, as you were working with these different kids of all these different ages, and, and like you said, realizing that the parents needed to be equally involved in that process, um, to work hand in hand with their kids. What are, what are some of the just kind of fundamental or, or base level tips or lessons you would have that, that we as parents should do to, to better connect and communicate with our kids to help them succeed, especially let's say in a school environment? Yeah, that's a good answer. I would say that in general, we need to remember that kids have a, a need within them for control and they don't know um, how exactly they're going to grab it, but it's something that's deep within them. And every single child that I've counseled, it doesn't matter if they're, if I'm dealing with a kindergartner or I'm dealing with someone graduating from high school. Right. Um, the moment that they're real with me, I can see that they're trying to figure out how they're going to control their life, how they're going to work with their life. Mm. And so parents have a lot more, uh, I guess you could say, um, I, it, they get a lot that kids can really identify with them when they feel heard by their parent, when they feel like they do have a measure of control over their life and their choices, and they have some input. But the problem is that that's exactly the opposite of the way that we want to parent, because we're like, no, nah, they're messing up. Therefore, I need to take control. I need to give them the rules and tell them how to do it. And I need to not listen to them because guess what? I'm the parent. And that's just our human nature because we're mm -hmm. trying to raise our kids in the best way that they can. And we don't want them to go down a bad path. So the, tr the, the thing that we need to switch as a parent is not looking at it like we're giving our kids control when we, as the adult, chooses to allow them to make some choices. It's right. still us that are leading that. 
So what I found is that when parents sit down in this pandemic situation and not in a stressful time, in a not stressful time, right? Yes. And then they say, yeah. And then they say, I want to have a conversation to really find out how this has been for you. Yeah. How has this been for you? What, what's been the hardest part? Do you remember when it was the hardest? What was hard about it? And then switch it up. What's been the thing that's worked for you? Yeah. What's the thing? What, what are the times when things have gone well? What's been happening at that time? And then you being that curious person with your child allows them to kind of go, oh, you know, they straighten up a little bit and then they're going to, in their own little way, they're going to start to share and they might share something you disagree with. And my second point with that is close your mouth. It's okay. You don't have to agree with everything that they, they don't have to agree. You know, it's not a teaching moment all the time. And that's a, a really important point for us to remember as parents is there's a time for teaching and there's a time for listening. And if we want our kid to really listen, then we need to be able to also listen to them. And then what happens is when they do get in a place where they're, they're listening and you're writing some stuff down, guess what? You'll be able to get your point across. But when you do, you'll be able to use real language from them to say, oh, I heard that you said that the very best time when you work out is, I mean, when you do your schoolwork is actually when the I don't know, maybe it's something super bizarre when it's dark in the room, you know, and then you can say, that's real. What do you think it is about the darkness that helps you? Maybe we could just add enough, you know, then you guys are problem solving. And then they're more likely to be like, okay, I can give that a shot. So it's kind of allowing us a solution focused message would be that we're looking for solutions but we're not giving all the solutions. We're looking to bring that out in our kid and allow them to think through it and them to be like, okay, okay. And then they take control of that idea. And don't you know, and you could think about it as a father, once you take control of an idea, then you're down, you know, like, especially I know, I mean, with my husband and most fathers, all right, we're going on a vacation. I'm in control of this. And they're like writing everything down. But we want our kids to feel that same feeling. That's we good. want them to feel in control of it because if you're in control of it, it's like, I got to do what they teacher says here. I got to do yeah. what my parents says here, you know, rather than them saying, this is my stuff and I'm doing this. And I wrote down my schedule That's good. and I messed up on my schedule. And now what am I going to do to fix that? You know, ah, I love that. I love that. Yeah. Getting, getting them involved in the process. I, I've definitely seen that. And there's been times we've, We've done a, a decent job with that. And of course, other times, like, like you said, going back to the, you know, the control and the do it my way or, or even trying to explain our thought process, thinking that we can rationalize with a five-year-old, an eight-year-old and, and even an 11-year-old. <laughs> yeah. And, and another thing that that brings up is that um, the point where a kid tunes out yeah. is usually a lot sooner than we think. <laughs> yeah, almost immediately, think- right? <laughs> It's like, uh, joke's on you. They've tuned out like five minutes ago. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I love it. I love it. For the, uh, for the folks that are watching uh, with us, if you want to chime in, we'd love to hear uh, some of your questions about parenting. If you have some specific uh, examples you'd like us to, to go through, but, but this is a good conversation. We're all to a great start, uh, Cher. I appreciate it. I, um, you know, I like that piece that you talked about with, uh, not only having them involved in the process, but you even mentioned, I think something that's key is, is them, it almost sounded like you were saying, letting them set up their, their reward or even the, um, or even the, um, I don't know if punishment's the right word, but if they don't accomplish the goal like they were looking to. So if you worked with them on getting the work environment set up and here's how we'll do your work schedule, and this is what you said you were willing to commit to, um, are you saying also let them come up with what happens if they fall short on accomplishing those goals or sticking to what they said they would do? I would say that it, de- it definitely depends on their age, you know, and their, their age and their level and what they're right. able to actually do. And I'm not going to pretend like, I mean, this is a very individualized thing because some kids are very right. tricky and they're also very, uh, some kids can be very passive aggressive about these things and they'll just (laughs) the way they'll take control is to refuse to cooperate with that you know like I'm not going to do that so then what you know so but then so it's a matter though of your attitude is when this child 
is pushing back at me. Yeah. There is something that they are lacking. There's a blockage that is going on. Maybe they think they're going to disappoint me. So they'd rather go off the opposite end and just make a problem right then and there. Maybe they feel as though they are lacking control and therefore they're just going to throw a fit. And the way they're going to control is by being bad. You know, they're going to control that situation. Right. Or it could be that there's so much going on in your home that they don't feel heard very often. Yeah. So the only time they feel heard is when they be like, well, I am doing my work the right way and they're con combative that way. So, so it's more important that you're giving them a voice than the exact things that go on because that's it. If within your home, you may already have guidelines and you don't want them to be changing up your guidelines. But in some cases you might say, well, what if this doesn't get done? What would motivate you to get this done? What would be the best motivation for you? Well, if it was your child, don't be like, well, why don't you tell me your punishment? But more like, well, let's say, you know, let's let's say that this was your uh, your child, if they're old enough. Say, if you yeah. had a kid, what would you do if they didn't follow through? And they might come up with a worse punishment than you said. And you'd be like, well, do we want to try that? And they'll be like, oh, shoot, you know? So it's kind <laughs> of like asking questions, you know, for them to realize, oh, yeah. This is something that I need to take ownership of, you know? So I think it's more productive, at least I've found with the families that I work with right. for them to set their own schedule at their own age. If they have to draw pictures, I don't care, yeah. but they, but they write down, not you, but they write down what their schedule is going to be when they're doing online. And, and if they need a break, say, well, what is that break going to look like? Because you might think well, a break looks one way. But they think a break means that they're going to be playing for at least an hour and rolling around on the ground and then going outside for a while and then getting dirty and having a snack. You're like, no, a break. You walk around, you come back, you sit down, right? So then you have that conversation. Well, what does a break look like? Well, how long do you actually have a break? What do you think you could do in five minutes? Well, let's time it right now and let's put a clock on for five minutes and see how much you can do in five minutes. Well, that's the time of your break. So what can you do in a break? You know, because a lot of the parents that I work with, they have a big time with their child staying on task Exactly. during the online stuff. And everybody has stuff that they need to do and get done. So uh, it comes back to that ownership. Yeah. You know, you not, they, they're going to lean on you for everything you let them lean on you for. So if you're taking, coming in and taking ownership of it, then they're going to be like, cool. Mom's going to come in any minute or dad, dad's mm -hmm. going to come in and rescue me. So why do I have to worry about it? I'm going to sit here until they yell at me and then I'll jump off my game that I've been sneaking on and watching doing, you know, so that's what they're thinking, you know, but yes. then if you switch it on them and you say, wait a minute, oh, wow, this means you're probably not going to get that assignment done. What do you think now what's going to happen? What do you think the teacher is going to think of there? You did you waste time doing video games? Wow. And then what's going to happen? See, they really, really have to take ownership. And once they take ownership, they think, well, shoot, I got to do this. No one else is going to do it. Right. And then it's, they switch that. And then they write down five minutes. Well, during five minutes, I want to run. I want to jump. Okay, write that down, run and jump. And then see, you leave them alone after that. You're right. That's the trick. You don't say, okay, you have a schedule. You committed to blah, blah, blah. Are you doing that? No, just, just let them do it and be like, how did your schedule go? What went well? What didn't go well? What do you need to do better tomorrow? Did that timing work out for your break? Like we talked about, if not, what do you need to do to change it? There you go. It's always you, 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 what do you need to do to change it? What can you do to fix it? What can you do to keep, take more control? And then it's like, I can't believe you did that. That's just, that's another huge strategy. I love this get rid of this is so important actually i wish that i could i wish that i could put this in my brain more often because this yeah. is one that i have to remember is that get rid of saying i'm proud of you so often and you did a good job for me they're not working for you Ooh. if they're working for you then you're never going to get the best out of them you need to have them working for themselves so you need to switch it and say that's amazing that you did that how did you do that you did that. That is incredible. 
I don't know if I would have been able to do that when I was your age. Like, okay, let's get frank. We, none of us would have been able to do this with this age. We didn't even have computers that would do this when we were their age. <laughs> exactly. So we can flat out tell them, I would have never been able to do what you're doing right now. That's incredible. You know, so we're giving them that, ah, oh, wow, I did that. Rather than, oh, I just made my dad proud. See the difference? Mm. It's huge. It's huge in a child's mind. They switch that. And then they're like, they, they work differently. That's all I can say. They work differently yeah. when they're saying, I'm doing this because I can do my schooling. And then, yeah, it doesn't mean that you get rid of all I'm proud of you. Of course, you're going to have time to tell them you're proud. Right. Of course, you know, but you don't overly lean on that to where they're working like your employee. They're working because this is their school. This is school. And this is their school. That's their you thing, know? Yeah. That's, right. Or what this could be for anything, wow. for anything that's theirs, cleaning their room, whatever it is, exactly. you know? No, I, I, I love that. Cause I, I was even thinking with, um, I've had all three girls, like I said, five, eight and 11, all of them have come through at different points and said, Hey, I did this. Are you proud of me? And like I said, it's yeah. funny because we try and make sure we're always, um, you know, validating them, always letting them know that they did a great job, that we're, that we're proud of them. And then, so when they come back and ask, it's like, interesting you know I, I definitely noticed that i'm like we literally just told you we we're proud of you about what you just did or, or something else but that whole idea of that internal gratification are you proud of yourself you know and doing yes. the things to make yourself proud and then of course there's nothing wrong with getting that external validation but making sure that you're not only doing it for those reasons i i love that that's that's a that's a great mindset shift to, to make sure they're they're getting both but especially more importantly that internal satisfaction Oh, and you said that right, where it's not that you, it's a trade-off one or the other. Yeah. It's just that you are the, of the, are the parent and you are now in a different role than you've ever been in before. Yeah. And you need to understand that their, their empowerment of what they do each and every day is so, so critical. And it's more critical than it's ever been that they take ownership rather than work to make their parents proud. And making their parents proud is awesome. I mean, you love feeling like your parents are proud of you, but then we need to, we need to balance that, you know, with our, like you said, how you must be so proud of yourself, you know? And then they're like, wait a minute, I am. And then they feel that, you know, I am proud of myself. This also works well with sibling rivalry and arguments, Okay. right? Because you take the one that you feel in your heart is driving you bananas and they're probably <laughs> the problem right in your mind you have that figured out like that i know who the problem is it's name the child you know exactly right and <clears throat> you you look and you call them in and you'd be like you know what it must be a real challenge for you to get along with your sister when they're da 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 da, da. so then you're kind of identifying and then you say well, how do you do that? How do you get along? How do you even get to the end of that when you're so frustrated? And then they're saying, well, I did it. And then you listen carefully because at one point they're going to say something like, and finally I just walk away. And then you say, oh, you just walk away? Like, just like that? Wow. Well, see, so it might take a while, but you figured out how to handle it. I wonder if you could do more of that. So you always wow. do it with the child that's struggling, right? So you yeah. take them in and you empower the child that's struggling. So when they go back into that argument, they are going to not feel as though they're losing their power, which is the main reason they're fighting so hard anyways, is because exactly. they're feeling like they're an underdog or they're gonna like, you know. It goes back to control. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. you talked about at the beginning, that control. Oh, that's so interesting. There's, it, it, like you said, it's a couple of main points that keep coming up, that control issue and then that whole listening piece and, and that listening piece is so hard, <laughs> as, as, like said, especially as adults and going from how, at least how I was raised, you know, listening wasn't a, it wasn't a big part of it. So I love that. That's the, the oh focus. my gosh, Curtis, you're so right. The listening is huge. Even on your, your website. So I'm looking at your website, the focus And I mean, literally the first box you have on here is listen, connect and then grow. <laughs> so Clearly, that's a, a key piece that you found that works well in um, in working with the children, and this is what I wanted it to. It's so important. And this is what I want to ask you with that, because I know you have, um, especially around this whole idea of, of communication, you have a new uh, course or workbook that just came out. So conversations that empower, right? Yes, um, I really feel as though 
it is really tough right now for us to communicate normally, yeah. you know, and it's unfortunate, but there's going to be a lot of normal conversation skills that our kids learn uh, through being in a classroom and being conversing with their peers and having to debate subjects and you know, think about what used to happen on a normal basis just on the playground for them to decipher how they were going to speak to different groups and how they mm -hmm. were going to communicate. And then they would come back and share that with you. And then you would be able to say, hey, this is how we have these conversations, right? So much of that just is not happening right now. And That's a right. lot of their conversations are happening by tick, 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 which is fine. It's a different way of communicating. Yeah. But the face to face still has to be so important you know Sorry. it still has to be something we teach and so i developed a course conversations that empower for with the thought in mind that when important conversations come up we want to be ready to use the very best and most research-based uh methods that are going to be able to make a difference because we're modeling it for our kids and also because we do want to have deep and meaningful conversations, not only with our children, but with our loved ones in these crazy times. It can even be tough to have those conversations with husbands and wives, you know? So the skills that I put in this course are uh, a, a, a little bit of business, a little bit of counseling, a little bit of solution focused, wrapped into steps that you can practice. Nice. Now, in a real conversation, are those steps gonna just swing by exactly as so? Maybe not, but guess right. what? If you practice, you will, you'll flow into a much more natural conversation that involves listening and responding to that person's uh, want and need in the conversation. And then uh, less of you having so much of the need to be like leading that conversation, right. but having kind of like a, a strength in a different type of way is what my course is able to give you because you have the yeah. confidence of knowing that you can communicate and have these conversations, no matter how tough they are, no matter what subject pops out of their mouth, you can use these strategies to say step-by-step, step, we're going to get to the end of this with solutions that we've come up with, you know? That is so helpful. I cannot wait to, to take a look at the course. I know you and I were even talking about maybe running through the course together with some of the guys in our uh, DMD plus community. So uh, I'm yeah. excited about that. And these are some things that, like you said, you know, we're not we're not taught all that often. I mean, you have to really be focusing on a communication class or, or going on a course or marriage or parenting. And it's one of those things that needs to be had more often. But I love the fact that you've even packaged yeah. it so that we can even do it on our own as a as a as a self-led uh, as a self-led course. So it's over at your website. It, the, it's, the focus it's mindset. Super easy. Yeah. Yeah, I made sure that, I mean, we're busy. We don't have a lot of time to mess around with stuff, right? So yeah. this is on the focusedmindset.com. You go to my products page and you're going to see the conversations that empower because I just launched it. I actually have it on sale as well. And the nice. great thing is, is I lead, I lead it. You could put it in your headphones and just listen. Half of it is audio, half of it's video. If you like watching me talk, that's fine too. <laughs> and then you can on your own revisit it. So it's not, it's, it's a great, uh, quick tool to have in your toolbox. Nice. Um, a lot of people will then say, hey, you know what? Can I get some coaching? Yes, I offer coaching as well. Family coaching, absolutely. I have 30 day, uh, a, I, I set out a 30 day path because it takes a while to retrain yes, right. habits. And but it's all designed around how are we communicating with each other? You know, how we see plenty of examples of horrible communication and we see the results that happens when that happens. You know, nobody's talking, everyone's arguing, fighting, whether it be the world. You know, mm -hmm. I had a parent come to me recently and my heart went out to her. Honestly, it was a heart go out to moment because she says, how am I supposed to teach my child how to communicate well when every time they turn on the television and everything else that they see all of this chaos, you know? And it was very heartbreaking because they were assuming that because they see stuff on TV, that it's going to make them hard to teach their child. Mm. But I had to stop and say, wait a minute, you're the most powerful person in their life. This is your home. Yeah. This is your home. You can, you don't have to allow them to identify with chaos. You can say, okay, now let's have a conversation. What about that made you feel, I don't know, awkward or uncomfortable. What would you do in that situation? What do you think they could have done better? How do you think that people should collaborate? 
you ask and you let them really begin to communicate. And it's our job to learn how to communicate ourselves. So we are not the ones perpetuating the problem, you know, because we can say, well, we can for a minute get a little uh, and then our kid hears that and they think, well, that's the way I should be then, you know, I'm just going to throw out an attitude. And it's like, well, is that the way we want to teach them to communicate? Or is that just us in our own roof? And we didn't realize that we just taught our kid how to have an attitude, you know? So we, <laughs> that's why I developed the course, you know, I mean, you know, you're laughing because you know, it happens to all of us, right? It just does. We can't help it. But you mean the eye roll doesn't to... just come natural? That, that's just not something <laughs> they just, they just built in innately. They learn that. <laughs> right. They're like, they're like, you know what, as soon as that, that person ticks me off, I'm just going to tell them blah, blah, blah. And then they're like, you're like, oh no, that's kind of what I did the other day, you know? Yeah. So it's like, you know, we can, and we can have conversations about that too. You know, our kids need to know that we're not perfect. We'd be like, you know what I did that the other day, that was just me being me. But you know, what I really wish I would have communicated like is I wish I would have said this or that. And if you're ever in a situation when you have a boss, this is the way you should handle it, you know? And then you guys are conversing, then you're being real. And, yeah, uh, and it just, it, it really, really, the whole course, just to give a little instance, you, you guys, you have listeners that deserve a little extra, right? It's all about empowering the person that you're talking to. So the mindset shift there, like I've said a lot, mindset shift, you shift mm -hmm. your mind just a tad and it makes a huge difference is that you're going to empower through listening. You're going to empower through validating what they're going through. You're going to power by helping them focus the conversation through what you've already heard and by helping you guys have a call to action. Nice. All right. And then by offering help. And so when you have a call to action, that's working together. And then you say, how can I help you with that? Or how can I assist you? Do you need me to walk you to this person? Do you need to help me, you know, help you write a letter? I don't know. There's a million situations this works with, but when you start to practice those steps, it's what I really dig into in the course. Right. Then you say, okay, first I'm going to listen. Then I'm going to validate, not the type of validating, like you make me proud, but validating, like you're amazing that you can do that. I wonder how you can do more of that. And then, like I said, focusing the conversation, I have a whole piece on you being able to pull out what you're hearing from that person that's listening. Nice. This works well with wives, actually. My, my, because <laughs> my, my husband's like, I like that point a lot because it's really hard when you're dealing with, uh, it might, I don't know if it is for you, but I have a lot of dads that come to me and I talk to them. And a lot of times I try and talk to them without the wife because I just want to hear what, what they're going through. And right. it's not to any fault of any wife. I'm a wife. I know this, but I'll speak you know, and then the dad will sit there <laughs> and this happens in counseling too. Yeah. Uh, the, the wife is speaking, you know, she's speaking, speaking and the dad's sitting there and I'm thinking There's probably a whole lot going on in the dad's mind right now. So when I ask the dad, normally, I, I so often you have no idea. You could, you probably, when I say it, you'll probably be like, yeah, that's probably what I would have said. They say, I just don't know how to fix it. That's almost always what they say. They don't even want to go through the problem with me. They're just like, I'm here because I want to fix it. Exactly. And that it's because I find that dads, um, and I, I think I mentioned your show in podcast 21, when I mentioned, I was talking about how women handle things. And then I said, but men, they handle things very differently. Right. When a guy feels as though something's not going right, uh, they can take it very personally. Like I'm not succeeding at the job I've been given. But see, a woman will be like, well, people are just da -da 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 -da. like, we have a whole lot of other crap going on in our mind, right? <laughs> right? So, you know, so it's not like that. We're like, you know, all over, but a guy is usually like, oh, it can like really get heavy. It can get very, uh, it, it's just almost like a weight right. that a lot of dads carry on their shoulders because they want to do their best. You know, they want to be able to succeed and they want to be able to solve the problem. And so a lot of the time is when I'm talking to a father, I try and free them to that, to say, you know what, I bet you that there, there's a lot of solvable solutions that don't entail you solving it at all. It, it means you stepping back and being able to ask the right questions right. and 
and influence things in such a way that you can feel the strength that you need to feel, but not like you're doing something wrong if something doesn't go right, because you're just saying, you know what, I'm going to dig in and ask a few more questions. I'm going to get a little more information. I'm not going to let my mind go straight to how can I fix this? Because then you stop and you have the pressure on you of how to fix it. And so I'll take a dad and I'll say, okay, you know, you want to fix it. If this was easy, what would it look like? If it was simple mm -hmm. and easy. And then they usually think about it. And they're like, well, it would just be this or that. And I'm like, well, what about that could you do now? Let's not worry about a year from now. Let's not worry about all the problems that could happen. But what could you do in the next 10 minutes? Right. What could you do in the next hour? You know, and it's very important that fathers do that because they, it's ridiculous to think really that we can fix everything. You know, we really can't, you know, that's ridiculous, but it's just our human nature. So it's that's important so to know that we're all, you know, there that you're all in it together. It's okay. And then you say, but you know what, rather than trying to fix this, I'm going to see if there's some strategies that I could switch up that will actually do the job of fixing it. That's right. But it's because I've switched a little strategy here and there, you know, do a little science experiment on the wife and try answering, asking some different questions, you know, and, and, and see what happens, you know, yeah. things like this. It's, it, it becomes more empowering, you know, conversations that empower, it's empowering you, it's empowering them. You know, <clears throat> excuse me, at the end of the day, um, yeah, you're so right. And that's, that's one of the biggest things that I've noticed as I've had these conversations with different experts, with different coaches, different um, uh, counselors and, and, and folks that have come on, especially into DMD. It's amazing how much you all value questions and asking the right questions. And it's, it's one of those things that I think we're, like you said, being people, we all have those control issues. We all want to be heard. We all want to, you know, feel like we're being listened to. And so a lot of times that translates into um, over talking or interrupting and, and not having just basic good uh, conversational communication skills. But that, like you mentioned, and of course, with that then comes solving the problem. But I, but I love, as you mentioned, and as I've heard, repeated so often it just has to still sink in that the goal isn't always or necessarily to solve the problem but for everybody to be empowered through that process to know that there will be a there there can be a resolution if we're all working together and a lot of times that's going to come by asking more and better questions oh uh, so well said i mean that is so well i couldn't have said it better myself i mean everyone working together is and being empowered is far greater than us feeling at the end of the day like we solved something or upset at ourselves because we didn't solve it yeah. you know it's just so so incredible how we never all sometimes we, we forget to step back and think about how we can just make tiny switches and then give it a shot that's right you know don't make it such a big big deal like just give give a new thing a shot and see how it goes I and if it doesn't it. work then it didn't work you know if it doesn't work with your child, if you sit down and a schedule, it, you try to make a schedule with your middle child or whatever, and the <laughs> schedule goes, goes out the window, well, then you're like, you know what? Maybe we just schedule a couple things. Maybe we just work on break time. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. Break it down into you know, just, bite sized chunks. Yes. Um, yeah. No, I, 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 I love that. Being willing to experiment and go back to that whole, you know, scientific process and not assume that it needs to to, like I said, be fixed immediately or one size fits all and, and working through that process yeah. and letting the whole thing be a learning experience. I, you know, I, I've even talked with other folks um, as I've been doing interviews and they were like, well, what's one of the, the pluses that's come out of the pandemic and, and virtual school and being home with everybody a, a whole lot more? And it's funny because one of my answers was just that, that now we could take, for instance, the science lesson, we'll go on a walk around the neighborhood and we can actually look and say, oh, let's talk about this type of rock or look at that ecosystem. And we could actually take those, those things they were learning on paper on the screen and, and bring it into real life. Um, but how easy it is to forget that, hey, you know what? Let's apply this to other areas too. Let's take that scientific process, that journey of investigation and observation into all aspects of life, not just science, <laughs> earth science. Yeah, I mean, it is kind of science. I call it a science experiment now and then because it is sort of, it's a social experiment. It's a so exactly. you know, sometimes sociology. We're, we're trying something new, you know, and that's, and we're gonna see how it turns out, <laughs> you oh, know, things it. like that. I'm telling you, it's just so liberating because I mean, so many parents feel alone 
And that's why I love what you're doing because we are not alone. We are all in this. It doesn't matter if I'm in California and you're across the world, it does, I mean, across the United States, right? you know, we all have the same commonality that we are working towards figuring out all of the uh, all of the different conflicts and things that come up in everyday life. Right. And we want to do the best we can. And that's just really, you know, I mean, it's not only me, I mean, it's about, it's, it's great that I've had this passion and I'm thankful that I can have opportunities like this, but it's being inquisitive to say, okay, you know, if once I get on Cher's website, what else could I do? What exactly. else, what can I do to fill myself up? And as we fill ourselves up, we have more to give, you know? That's right. It's an important process. We, we talk so. about that all the time. You can't give from an empty cup, right? Right, <laughs> it's hard to pour right. Out from a cup that's empty. Ah, yeah. I love it, Cher. Yeah. I love it. I, um, I know we're getting close to the end here. So as we wrap up, I want to ask you about one actionable tip and, and uh, situations that come up for all of us all the time. And then, and then we'll, uh, you know, fully wrap it up with how folks can find you and if they want to contact you, work with you and stuff like that. But well, let's go through one actionable example. We've talked a lot today about listening. We've talked about clear and effective communication. We've talked about empowerment. Uh, we've talked about asking questions and being inquisitive. But I think the moment, and like you said, where the rubber hits the road is um, in the immediate moment of that conflict. So um, I'm talking with my 11 year old and she takes a quiz, it's open book, and she ends up getting a 50 on it. <laughs> How do you get a 50 on an open book quiz? Or, or, my eight, or my eight year old, you know, like you said, she's supposed to be working on this assignment here and, and come to find out she's, you know, watching a, a YouTube video. She started with the YouTube video for class, but of course they, they, oh, we think you should watch this one next. And it goes right into the next one. And so she's doing something she's not supposed to, or we're about to get, you know, what, any of those situations where we see that the conflict is, is, is happening. Um, what are your tips in that moment uh, to to be able to handle that conflict better than the my you know our, our typical go to of yeah I, what are you doing watching this YouTube video you're supposed to be you know doing your work how could you get a fifty you know yelling and all like in that moment when the emotions are rising up what would be some of your tips on, on on doing a better job than our than typically our initial bad response <laughs> yeah. And the bad responses are going to happen from time to time. I mean, we're in our we're in our home, and the teachers don't make all the right choices either when they're frustrated. You know, when, so now and then we're going to be in that space and go bah, and then we give ourselves a little grace. So that's the first thing: give yourself a little grace when those moments happen. Uh, but there are some things that we can do, and it actually goes into the giveaway that I want to offer anyone who is listening. If they go to thefocusedmindset.com/slash/vibes, V-I-B-E-S vibes, then I'm going to have a free giveaway that I give people of what I call a good vibes checklist. And it's a way for us to be able to uh, basically program our mind to handle things in a more productive manner, in a more peaceful manner, in a manner that we can be proud of. And basically, uh, you know, long story short, when I was driving home once after my mom got in an accident and all of my five brothers and sisters were inputting their personalities into the situation, I realized that each person brings a different energy, you know, a really defined different energy. And it could completely change depending on the situation. And I, I had an acronym pop up in my mind, V standing for values. I, I thought of a vibe and a V stands for values. I stands for interested. B stands for being bold and E stands for enjoy. And that, and what I call, I call it checking your vibe. So. When you go into, it does not take very long. It takes, I, I did this recently when my daughter was at my door and I could tell something heavy was, she was about to talk to me about something heavy. From the time she was at my door till she came and walked right where I'm sitting right now, I said, okay, what am I gonna value? I'm gonna be a listening, I'm gonna be listening to her right now. I'm not gonna be judgmental. Uh, what I'm gonna be interested. I'm gonna commit to being interested to my kid right now. I'm gonna be bold in what I need to say, but boldness does not mean that I'm flying off the handle right. and I'm going to enjoy this moment. So you brought up some moments that are not too enjoyable, but you know what? Even those moments, oh my gosh, our kids grow up so fast. Right. So when we are in the moment, we say, you know what? I'm going to enjoy being a parent, even when they're screwing around and being weird. So, cause they're going to grow up. My kids are growing up now. They, 
none of that stuff even matters once they become adults. You know, you laugh about it. You really exactly. do. Trust me. Wow. So, so what you do is you do a quick vibe check. You can do it in your own way or you can use the acronym that I have. If you download what I, uh, by going to thefocusedmindset.com slash vibes, you'll get a checklist that you could put on the mirror or in your car or wherever. And then also I have a self-evaluation that's been really helpful for a lot of parents and kids to say in the different times of the day, when I'm with my kids, how is my vibe then? And how is that different than the vibe that I bring to my, my spouse? Right. How is that different than the vibe I'm bringing to work? How is that different than the vibe I'm bringing when I'm by myself walking the dog? You know, what do I need to take from those places to be the best version of myself? And, um, but those are all, you know, those are things we can work on. But as far as in that moment, yeah. we can say, you know what, I'm going to value that I'm not the kind of dad that's going to blow his top right now. So if I value the kind of dad that's not going to do that, that I'm going to keep my voice down, right. no matter what, you know, and then you automatically put yourself in check and then interested, interested could just mean that you're going to be a little more observant, you know, and yeah. bring it up. So I see that you watched YouTube for an extra hour. I noticed that. But what, what, what's happening here, you know, rather than just assuming everything, they might right. actually have some kind of logical in their own mind reason why that happened. No, and then right. boldness in the right. Yeah. And then boldness in the right way saying, okay, now what needs to be said? And how can I say that? How, how can I get my point across in the right way that I can be proud of it at the end and then in choosing to enjoy. So those four steps are just things that our mind is That's amazing. Good. We can do that super fast, but the more you practice, you'll walk into on the hallway down into your child's room rather than going, I've told them a thousand times. You'll be like, whoa, let me check my vibe. What am I going to be doing right here? This is me walking into my child's room, put myself in check. That's, That's the good, bottom yeah. line. No, I, lo I love that, Sherry. Thank you for, for sharing those those vibes. I definitely, definitely going to get down with that. I, I was talking with um, Dr. Doug, one of our DMD Plus coaches, um, just the just the other week, and, <clears throat> and he was talking about yeah, those mindful breaths. You know, like you said, when you feel that 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 tension uh, coming up, when you feel the anger rising, take those deep breaths and, like I said, check your vibes. So I, I love how it all yeah. it all ties together, taking taking account of being more um, purposeful about how that interaction is about to happen versus being reactionary. We we all know nothing because good comes from reactions. you know how it's going to happen. Oh yeah. And all that, like you, the, what you just said, you know it because you've done it a thousand times, you know, you're going to go in there and most likely they're going to be off task, you know, like, so we can prepare for these things, people. We can. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Preparation and then, and then partnering with our kids, partnering with our spouse on yes. those solutions so that we can get ahead of it. Mm -hmm. And then that way, if they did get off task, they already know the, the, you know, parts of the conversation that's about to happen. And there's already a plan in place for, you know, what's going to happen next. Based, oh, based yeah. If they've made about. their own schedule, yeah. if they've gotten off their schedule and they really own it, your conversation is going to look different in the first place. Cause you'll be like, what part of this, where, where, what happened here at this yeah, schedule? Exactly. And they'll say, well, it was right about there. I screwed up. And you'll be like, well, what are you going to do to fix it? <laughs> Yep, you can do this. You got this, man. I, I love it. I love it. Well, Sherry, thank you so much. And so I know we've said it multiple times today, but thefocusmindset.com and then um, and then your podcast. Tell them again about your podcast and, and also the ways that they can work with you. Yes, um, free content with podcasts, right? So I do a lot of this training um, and all of my content on my podcast, what's different about mine um, than maybe some others is that I'm in the trenches. That It comes from actual moments of time that I've sat with families. It comes from actual kids that have told me how they feel. So if you want to learn more about that, Parenting 2.0, The Focused Mindset, you're going to get a lot of just getting the right stuff in your brain. So then the right stuff could come out your mouth kind of thing. And I also have some guests that would probably be very helpful. Um, one in particular on, on episode 32, Eric Wagner, he is a specialist, a behavior, a specialist for um, kids that have the worst of behaviors. So for any of your parents that are just saying, you know, this all sounds great, but my child just seems to be, you know, ruining my life. <laughs> it's just that that's, that's not something to ignore. It's something to say, you know, it might be that I really need to dig into um, some different type of things. And that episode is, has been life-changing for many parents of really understanding how we can deal with difficult behaviors, which we haven't really dug into. And that, that happens. Right. So um, 
so there's a, just a lot of, of knowledge. I would highly recommend for people to check it out and and uh, just just support growing as a human. And that's what my podcast is all about: is helping parents grow and helping them find those solutions that they so desperately want. That's exactly right. Well, Shay, thank you so much. I know um, I'm looking forward to our future conversations, looking forward to working with you and working through the the um, conversations that empower uh, workbook. So so definitely encouraging everybody. I'm looking forward to you being a guest. You are going to be on my show. And then people are going to be like, dang, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot wait. I cannot wait. <clears throat> well, folks that are watching with us today, please leave a comment. Let us know what you enjoyed about the conversation. And when we get back together to have a part two, let us know what you'd like us to cover um, at that time. But Sherry, thank you so much for being uh, here with me today and empowering our, uh, our audience. We really appreciate you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. All right.